Anyway, did you guys watch the Commentator Cup that happened on Friday? Yeah, I had a lot of fun. I thought the event was fun. And maybe want to plan another event. I haven't really thought about what event to plan. But uh, it was a lot of fun. It was on Ultra Gen's channel if you want to watch it with their commentary. Today, we're going to watch the matches and talk about it. I think that you will gain a lot of insight from basically me talking about them after more than you would have me just like playing the matches and whatever whatever right you're really watching the spooky match yes we are it's important right you can see the difference in defense it'll give you an idea about the the correct and the wrong things and when i play bonic plague after i play spooky i defend against soul and i like don't really get hit let me grab this archive shut up old sage jam isn't it technically younger sage jam uh it is but it's old sage jam because it's sage jam in the past so he's younger but also old to give you an idea about my prep for commentator cup i streamed monday through friday i didn't do much prep for the tournament i sort of just relied on my normal prep as in like i figured i felt pretty comfortable in most of the matchups and so the first person I was going to play was Raph. Raph is an Axel player. And I was really excited about that because I don't really have a super defined strategy against Axel. I just kind of have the layer one strategy, which is like, you know, when you fight a random Axel player online, you're like, oh, I just got to get in and hit him. And then he got called into work and he couldn't make it. So I didn't play him round one. So round two, I play the winner of Romanova and Spooky. And so Spooky won that. I'm going to talk a little bit about my, my game plan in the matchup because I have a lot of thoughts about what to do with soul in this matchup a lot of people including my own viewers you hate to see it were like sage sage M doesn't have a good on g like he doesn't have good on g experience he doesn't have the matchup down or like whatever and uh i think the opposite actually i think my on g matchup practice is pretty good on g is good on the ground right if you think about on g his specialty is poking and counter poking right he's very good at that and he's aided a lot by having spin. He has these buttons. He has far slash 5H, uh, 2D, 5K, 6H. He has like all these buttons to poke with on the ground. And what makes poking against him scary is that if you want to counter poke against Anji, he can spin to beat your poke and then either punish or, or you know, put you in a situation where you have to guess after, right? And so, you know, particularly with Soul, a lot of the things you want to counter poke with are like 6S, uh, or Fafner or something like that, right? And so those two things are like a little scary to just throw out against Anji because if he spins them, you know, he's just going to smoke you. So my general strategy is to stand a little further than Roundstar and play reactively against him. Use my 6H to whip punish stuff like his 6H or his far slash or whatever. Use um, 6S from far away so that he can't get close slash punish or he can't throw you so that you don't just get spun and then punished and then all that. And then only really Fafner when you're sure he's not going to spin. So, round star, I just hit far slash. Now, I know this seems very simple, but keep in mind, I'm not always going to far slash, right? But I just wanted to see what he would do round star. Anji has really good round star options against this. He has 5K, he has 2D, he has walk back far slash, he has like walk back 5H. He has like all kinds of buttons to beat this at round star. However, does my opponent know how to stop it? This is, a, this is gonna be a really important question in this matchup. Does my opponent know how to stop it? You can't do that against me, that's for sure. You just ID right away. And again, look at the range I hold. Do you see where I'm at? I try to stay away from spin. I try to stay away from far slash. I, st I try to stay away from 2D or 6H. I stand back here. This distance is like a range where I don't feel that threatened against the character. And I can threaten with 6S or Kara Fafner pretty easily, right? And also, if he, he air dashes at me, I can just, you know, anti-air, right? So I feel pretty good about that. He runs up. I'm just going to wait. Use my 2S to try to poke. Back, Always backdash here. And then if I see the spin during the backdash, don't be lazy during your backdash. This is something I, I stress a lot when I do commentary. Don't be lazy when you backdash. I backdash. I see that he spun. I hit 6S. I'm not going to let him spin for free. I'm punishing this thing. I'm going to counter hit him and smoke him. Don't just backdash and then do nothing. While you're backdashing, look to see what he's going to do. Again, I backdash there. I waited to see if he was going to hit a button. Whiff punish. You see the range. Again, the range that I'm holding is like a very safe range against the character. After my pressure here, he challenges. I backdash. The range I'm holding here is like a very safe, inoffensive range. If he wants to beat me, he has to walk up or run up or run FD and play foozies. But what ends up happening, he whiffs a little, a little bad right here. 
I backdashed the 6H. A little bit of Fuzzy. I missed the DP. It's okay. I can burst here. Notice the burst timing, too, that I did on that was... Uh, this is a punish. He doesn't do it. Which is a bad sign for him. So, the whiff, the timing that I burst there is I let him do close slash. I waited to see him that he was going to go for the 5H, and then I burst. You don't want to just burst on a close slash because they can jump cancel him and block your burst, right? So, the burst timing is also, you know, you should think about the burst timing, too. Again, the the thing is, is like, it's same thing. I, I, I'm kind of just waiting to see, oh, this is going to hurt. I'm kind of just waiting to see what's going to happen and then playing uh, Foozies against the character. I, I baited the burst there, I think, or baited YRC maybe is what it was. That's a punish. An important punish to talk about, too, maybe, because I got a little unlucky here, but... Um, Notice I punish like I think this is a backdash. When I play Ryan later, you'll notice that throw PRC is much less effective, and I'll talk about why. Right, I'll talk about why later on. Again, back up to the same range that I want to hold, get an anti-air, and then run up and hit far slash. So like the the game plan is like very straightforward. You hold the range outside of where Anji has his best footsie options, where spin is scary, where success is like weak. And then you just hold your ground and fight for that space. That's like the strategy in the matchup. Don't let him air dash. Don't let him spin. Don't let him whiff buttons against you. Hold the space. And if he's trying to run up, then you can challenge or something, right? And until he starts spinning at the right times, I'm not really that scared. So round start option now. I went for, went for far slash a couple times. Now I'm going to choose violence. Okay, I chose violence and it just regular hit, which means he was trying to move at the start of the round or whatever, right? Another adjustment I made here. I send it here. I try to hit confirm and I miss. After this happens, I just hit a button. Because last time Bandit Revolver was blocked, he didn't punish. He just like hit 2D or something, right? Which is what he hits there. So instead of punishing me, he hits a button that's so slow that I can actually just hit 5K and challenge. I saw this last time, so I was like, I'm just going to hit 5K. He didn't punish me. He hit a really slow button. I'll take the damage. free. It's, that's free damage for me, right? His defense against against me so far also has been a lot of like, ooh, that's a bad burst. That's an OS right there too. His defense against me so far has been like slight FD, and then after he blocks Gunflame in the corner, he he challenges, which you don't really want to do at that range, right? At this range, when you space him out so that he's throwing Gunflame from this far, there's two things here. One, if you block the Gunflame, he won because he forced you to block spaced out Gunflame, and he can now press. If you're spacing him out like this and he throws Gunflame, you should jump or you should dash forward and block it so he's more negative or you should hit a button to challenge it. You can spin through it or you can ID over it to try to punish or you can uh, just jump regular jump over it or something like that. Or you, you know, you can do something to go through it, right? This is a range where you want to do something to go through the Gunflame or dash up and block the Gunflame or jump over the Gunflame. If you just block it, this is a now a win for soul, right? I am so happy when you I do spaced out gunflame and you just get smoked. See what I mean? I'm so happy about that. Like you have to to win in that situation, you have to do something else. If you're going to space me out and make me throw gunflame, you have to, you know, you have to do something else. You have to ID, you have to jump, you have to do something else. Again, that is a round star you don't want to do. Your far slash is not good against my far slash. It's too slow. That's a punish. Backdash. I've been backdashing on wake up a lot. And that time challenges on wake up. Gets caught out of the air. Super kill. Again, the defense. If you're going to jump, you need to FD first. You need to do something else. Right. That's not the uh, that's not the correct thing to do against Soul on defense there. You shouldn't be doing just raw jump like that. It's very easy to just get caught or anti -aired. Again, right here. This. This is like a bad round start. He did this last round start against me and got counter hit. I blocked here because I wanted, I expected an adjustment. What I expected was 5k or like 2d. And when I saw this far slash here, I was like, oh, I don't think he's, he, he knows the round star options against soul. This is not a good option against soul generally, unless you've convinced him to block and he hasn't done anything to convince me to block. He's, he's only hit slow button. So when I saw this, I was like, oh word. Okay. You've chosen, you've chosen death. Essentially, is how I felt. He could have punished that 6S also. Again, no punish on, on my, uh, whatever it's called, my Bandit Revolver. So I can pretty safely do Bandit Revolver and not worry. 
I run up. Same same strategy as before, by the way. Notice the the strat has not changed at all in in the position I'm holding what I'm doing. I run up and I hold this space. When I see that he's not doing anything, I hit 2S, right? And it counter hits and I confirm. I could have gone for that was a wild throw that got thrown. Um I could have gone for like, you know, something else, but I didn't really need to there. Soul twerks a little bit right there, and then this is the kill. 5P is a fine round start against Soul. 5K is a fi fine round start. Walk back slash is good. Like, he has a lot of options. Walk back. Yeah, again. I mean, I figured he was going to hit far slash again. You can't do that against Soul. Uh, you know. Yeah, you can't do that. But yeah, I, it's just, it's not, it's not a thing. You can't, you can't jump there. If you want to jump, you need the FD. If you FD close slash and far slash, you can jump my 5H and you're out. Or and you can space me out. Again, that, that's fine. It's just, this is not the right defense. You know, it's not the right defense in the matchup. I think he's gonna respect me, so. And then, yeah, he gave up. He was like, well, "I'm over it." <laughs> so, you know, I feel I feel pretty comfortable in the matchup. Like I said, I I played KV like right before Gold Lewis came out in like 40 or 50 game set, and we played like a long time. And I felt like my strategy against Andre was pretty good before we played, and I felt like it was even better after I played him. My IB timing, I feel, is pretty pretty tight usually against the character. And my strategy on defense, I feel like it's usually pretty good. My understanding of like where he wants to be and why, I feel like it's pretty thorough. Does this make sense what I'm what I'm talking about so far? Hopefully it helps. This is what I think about when I'm playing, and this is my this is how I strategize. Okay, this is the second set that I played. This is against the uh, Ebonic Plague. So Ebonic Plague is actually the only person that I watched a match for before the tournament, and the reason is I didn't know what character he played. So I looked up, I just typed in Ebonic Plague. Guilty Gear Strive, and there was like a tournament that he played, his local tournament he won like three days or four days before Commentator Cup. And then I saw he was a soul player. I was like, oh, cool. All right, that's that's tight. And then I watched the match. I watched the first round, and I was like, oh, okay. I, I know what to do. Because he's a very, he's like very aggro. He wants, you'll see it in this set. He wants to force, and, and it doesn't matter what it is. He wants to force. He's going to force buttons he's gonna force pressure he's gonna force something on defense he's gonna force an air approach he like wants it to happen he's not gonna just like sit and wait for an opportunity and like the the person he was playing against couldn't really stop that from happening but i watched the first round and was like oh, okay my game plan is perfect like my, my normal natural game plan will be perfect so a couple of things that i i think here one i noticed when i was watching his footage he jumps a lot uh he really likes id in which you know is like a is a fine option but he likes it a lot and i think if i'm a reactive player i'm very happy about soul jumping at me that feels great his ground control is so strong that if he wants to force an air approach which is much weaker i'm like hell yeah okay cool it's not that good compared to his ground approach his ground approach is better the other thing is he nobody's punishing his success on whiff which it's kind of like past the level one thing you sort of have to know the soul matchup to do this but you really cannot get away with this at a high level people will whiff punish you constantly you cannot do it and i don't think i really saw a lot of that when i saw like the the match that he played I, I didn't see it very much so i was pretty ready for this so again my game plan in this is very similar to what i'm going to do against anji i'm going to stand even further away i want to stand like this far away so that 6s will whiff i can walk back or backdash and make it whiff and then after it whiffs i'm going to whiff punish with 6h the other thing is i want to stand far away so that if he ieds I have the full length of the IED to anti-air. So if you're closer, right? If you're like closer like this, sometimes anti-airing can be a little bit more difficult on reaction or if you're not expecting it. But if you're at like max distance where the IED will barely reach or it might not even reach, you have the most amount of time to anti-air it. So it's very easy. I want to stand far away is my objective. See how I walked back at the start and then I walk back right at the edge of the gun flame range. I challenge here. He doesn't whiff punish me. I'm like, hell yeah, this is great. I, that's a great sign. That's a great sign for me again. I stood really far away and I waited for the air approach. I, I knew he wanted to force. One thing to note in this that's really important, notice how he forced there and then notice how I force later when he whiffs six success. I, I want to show the difference between the two because I think there is an important difference actually. Eight the burst. That's a super early burst. That's like I just got hit burst. Unlucky that the 6P wall splatted, but you know, life goes on. He does something very important here too as well, which is this is not a real safe jump. Not a lot of people know this is not a real safe jump. You could have DP'd it. Uh, it loses to supers that are fast. This is, this is not a real safe jump. So when I saw this, I was like, all right, he's aware. 
Again, just block out the pressure. The other thing I noticed, and I saw this the very first match I played. Again, I only watched him play that one match in the tournament, and he did everything that was in this set. So he has like a pretty practiced play style. He knows what he's doing. Is he likes fake gun flame a lot? So I was I was waiting for that as well. Again, wait outside the range of the gun flame, and then I go into challenge. Yeah, I I kind of wait right outside the edge of where gun flame will disappear, and then dash in behind it. So that was kind of my plan. Again, walk back. I, I got to try to whiff punish a little too early there. Walk back. I wait. See how I challenge with run up far slash instead of IED. IED is slower. It's a bit more predictable. It's easier to counter. Run up far slash or run up wait are, is, a, to me, a much safer, better option to challenge a whiff button that you're not going to whiff punish. I think challenging a whiff with this is much better. It's a, it's a bit more consistent, and it's what I did instead. Again, immediate frame trap. I expect the button. Early DP, and I noticed the DP after the far slash is pretty common. Uh -oh. The game started exploding right there. Oh, I burst because I'm pissed. I'm like, fucking, yeah. why is the game exploding? I wild throw there because I have meter to PRCOS, right? So you see the, the the meter down here. So I feel pretty good about that. He does the DP anyway, and it beats it, which sucks because, you know, I would have been in great shape. So what do I do? I do it again. And that's game one. I feel pretty good. Game one went about as I expected. You know, my strategy seemed like it was right. I, I feel like I, I did the right thing. I, I played that pretty well. It was going to be slow and steady. I felt good. I felt great. Good old rock. Well, the reason why I throw is so good there is now. it's a throw that leads to big damage and then leads to... It's like, you know, it's, it's relatively safe in the sense that unless he does Tyrant Rave on Wake Up, I'm going to be safe, or 5k, I suppose, right? I'm going to be safe to whatever wake up options. If he backdashes, I PRCOS, I do 5k punish. If he jumps, we force a 50 50 in the air that I feel pretty comfortable with. If um, he does Tyrant Rave or wake up 5k, I get hit, but it's not the end of the world. I still have a lot of life and I have meter on my own wake up. I feel super safe about sending it there with uh, Wild a Wild Throw. Bit okay, I feel very, very, it's a very safe option relative to my other options. I start with Far Slash just because I wanted to see. Again, is not not gonna work against me. I do 2k there, air bandit bringer block or air bandit revolver block, which makes me plus. Block the burst, same spotty burst last time. And that was a little too high there. That was that was a mistake for me. A combo mistake and the throw right there. I was a little too far. Again, notice my defense against Soul versus what we saw in the first set, and also what we see when I play against Clage and what we see in the Ryan set. I tend to FD and just wait against Soul. I wait. I wait for him to commit to something. I like FDing to push him away and then jump. And notice here, I do FD, I jump, the, I, I block the air to air. I challenge when he goes for the, you know, I didn't get the side switch here. That's so unfortunate. Um, I challenge when he goes for the fake gun flame and I'm out of the corner. Aww. I thought that hit. And again, the reason I do this one here, I, I know I, I like, a lot of people are like, oh, he's just doing the BR here. I don't know why I did that for Nano. What up? Thanks for the prime. The reason I do this here, and it's the same reason you saw earlier, I thought he was going to be in the air still. And if you air block Banner Revolver, I still get to pressure you. But he landed so fast. Like, I did 6S, and he was airborne. And I was like, nice. So I did Banner Revolver thinking he was still going to be airborne. And then he wasn't, and then I got punished. And I was like, no. Yeah, I did drift RC forward on DP, which I shouldn't have done. But I still, you can still get a side swap there. I throw there. I thought that was going to be second Fafner. It wasn't. I go for super safe. 2k into 5d. which that 5d is not safe, but I thought I was going to have meter to RC. I did not. That was a mistake for me. I thought I thought for sure right here I was going to have the meter, but I, I didn't quite build it. I was a little short. Again, so that time he does 6s into 6s. I was challenging the whiff with my, my run to take space. One thing about whiff punishing or challenging in this game is you don't have to... You don't have to, like, do a button to win space. Like, it's perfectly acceptable to let your opponent whiff and then just run up after. Does that make sense? Like, you don't have to whiff punish every missed button. You can also take space as a reward for their whiff, which is what I did there. I ran up, and I just, I like, didn't hit a button immediately. I just ran up, and he did 6S, 6S, which is like, okay, I'll let that happen. That's okay. And then I just reset the positioning. I just wanted to see what was going to happen. I'm perfectly fine accepting space as a reward. My thing is, I was waiting for, like, not success, but like another whiff button up close. I was waiting for like, you know, 2S or far slide. I was waiting for something like that. I didn't expect success into success. I was like, oh, okay. Well, my bad. But again, I was super safe, so I didn't really care. Whiff punish. And I'm going to start doing that way more. I, I kind of, I didn't do it as much in the first, um, in the first set. But again, I, 
I, you know, I'm looking for that. The other thing is, you notice how I do far slash wait there? It's because he's been DPing after my far slash. You know what I'm saying? So I was waiting for it the first time. It didn't do it the first time, but that was a DP attempt. And then it came out on the second one. Still fine. I did it again. I should DP or 6P that, but I just backdashed. Because in my head, I was like, I'm just going to whiff punish it. And, you know, 6S is the wrong button to whiff punish it. Again, I'm just looking for the whiff. Yep, that's all I'm looking for in neutral. I'm okay backing up here, and then I had a plan there. It didn't quite work out. I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing this in the next two games, the, the next two rounds, I should say. I'm gonna start doing empty jump a bunch to bait movement, because when you whiff punish someone, they they generally tend to stop whiffing. I what I like to do in in matchups like this against players who are really aggro is I like to jump and then do nothing, and what that makes it feel like is like oh because I did nothing, they feel like oh shit. Time has passed. I should attack again. So my my strat was to empty jump, but I honestly didn't think I was gonna go over his head. Um, so I'll do it again in the next round. I lose some I lose some life here though. It's okay. My theory was right. Again, I have the out. I was a little too slow there. I should have hit a different button. Also, I'm doing 2D here just in case he does a vortex. I shouldn't have burst there either. I bait it. This is not a 2S by the way. I try to do close slash jump cancel FD and then I FD'd with slash and P and I got 2S instead of what I wanted. And I was like, oh shit, whoops. And then I try to do run FD right here. You can see me running to block the burst. And then I got hit anyway. So I tried to bait the burst twice and I got no burst bait, no burst bait. Uh, you know, these things happen. Oh, I try to block it. Again, I jump. I'm looking for a whiff that I can capitalize on. Like that. That's all I was waiting for. I wasn't going to do anything committal. Again, like I mentioned, I, I, I was pretty sure that if I just waited around most of the time, I didn't have to do anything. My opponent would just do something. And then if I react correctly, I should be fine. I talk about a lot about how easy it is to oh, whiff on a soul's lot. success. I talk about it all the time. And it's, it's incredibly easy to do. Like... This move, this move success, the hurt box for it is like the same size or slightly bigger as the hitbox. If you have an attack that reaches like out to here, anything like a 2D, you know, my own success, 6H, anything, you can just hit a button to whip punish it. It's always been like this. The hurt box has always extended really far. It's not new. Don't do this. I, I. I said it when 6S was changed. The move on whiff has just been bad, always. Just people didn't whiff punish it because it's easier to say, I hate soul, rather than, oh, I can whiff punish this, the success. Even if the move is disjointed on a hitbox or something, the hurtbox, the recovery has always been like this. It's always been, it's always been easy to whiff punish this. If you watch Punk play last patch, all he did against soul was stand far away and whiff punish with 6h against other soul players success there's an easy strategy to stop this if you're the other soul player but it just doesn't come up anyway game three again i'm gonna do the same plan here nothing's nothing's really gonna change i burst for positioning i didn't get my jump canceled but you know uh you know so you see what i'm saying there chat room same same strat nothing's gonna change i'm gonna hold space that's a punish. I wait to bait the burst. I backdash there expecting DP, and there was no DP. Anti air trade. God bless 5k. That was going to be a knockdown. This is not a great burst. I didn't do a great burst in the last round, though, so we're one for one. See how I'm empty jumping? I'm, I didn't really even want to do Bandit Bringer there. He kind of forced it by running at me, which was good. Again, defense against soul. A couple of important things to note here. All I do is FD. The FD on close slash makes it so that this 2k doesn't hit me. I could have punished and taken advantage there for log. What up? I could have just taken like my you know opportunity there and hit far slash or something. I didn't. 2s is spaced out. 6s gun flame. I don't jump. I don't challenge. I have to respect this. So I'm not going to do anything. Far slash. I don't wiggle. I just wait. I let him far slash again. After 2k is blocked or whatever, I get hit. I do a crouching button here, if I remember correctly, because... Uh, or I do a standing button here, yeah, which is the right choice. Doesn't combo. I read backdash. 
I'm out of there. Every time I'm on defense against this character, I do the same. You know, that's my default strategy until they show me something else. Again, I'm okay playing very slow. See how I take... This is the same... This is my idea, too. I think this is... We have opposite ideas. When I whiff, his strategy is normally to jump at me or something. When he whiffs, my strategy is not to... I, I like that he tried this, though. This is cool. This is not the right idea, but... When he whiffs... My strategy is not to jump, it's to run in and challenge on the ground. You see that? I don't really like jumping. I would rather just run and take space on the ground. I think it's better in this matchup because Soul's ground control is much better than his air options. Yeah, the encoding on this is crazy. Again, that has happened many times. So I baited it because that DP has come in that same spot like many times. So I just play safe. Last time we were in this position, remember I did ID jump H, it's fake. So he anti-aired it. So instead, I do a real Fafner instead. That might have been slightly not meaty, but I, you know, I changed my meaty here or my attempted meaty because he adjusted and he did 5k. So I change it up and I do a meaty that's real or can be real anyway. I'm going to backdash here. Notice I don't challenge. I don't do anything risky. I don't want to die. Death is bad. I used a double jump to bait an attack right there. So I just jump, double jump back. I let him whiff. I was a little, I wasn't right on my whiff punish. I think if I hit. 2k 6h or something it would have worked again same strategy i'm just jumping to bait movement i'm okay blocking here i got so unlucky that that didn't hit though i'm gonna fd him out i take my again look at my, my defense was fd him away when he did a button that could have been canceled into gun flame i ran forward to block it closer so that it would have been negative so that i could have challenged after i don't want to die so i'm playing super safe I get right out of the range of Gunflame. He whiffs. I take space. Wow, this, this is like... Okay. All of this is like super safe play. This double jump is to bait an attack. I do bait the attack, but I can't really whiff punish it. I, I go to challenge on my own. He resets with the back dash. Perfectly fine with that. It was a chance for me to win an interaction. He runs up on my dumb ass because I'm just waiting. Uh, I'm perfectly fine with this. I could have DP'd here. Or supered or something. I'm perfectly fine with this. This is great for me. I challenge on the fake Gunflame. That not hitting is a sh uh, fucking tragedy, but you know, we it's, it's fine. It's the nerf. He jump cancels. I FD him out, and then when I see this gun flame, and it's a fake, I run and block, because I'm like, okay, let me take some space. I take some space for myself, instead of being in the corner. I see that he's backed up. I take even more space. I don't want to get blocked the gun flame. I get out of the range of the gun flame, and then I hold my ground, and then I take some space after his whiff, and then I hold my ground. Like, this is just safe kind of like neutral decision making to not put myself in any danger against soul right i'm not doing anything risky i'm not doing anything that can get me kill i'm playing foozies i got lots of health i got lots of time i'm in, in no rush i do this i keep my pressure omega safe until then and then i anti-air the jump that's it i played it super safe i wasn't really worried i got lots of meter i got lots of time it looks funny to say I'm in no rush and then do vortex, but like, it's actually true. Like I'm, I'm, this is a very safe attempt at pressure. This like vortex is like, it, it's almost no risk. Like this vortex here into RC. Look what I do on block. That's it. I did 2k six. Like I don't do anything fancy. I keep the, the frame trap as simple as possible. I don't try to throw. I don't try wild throw. I don't do anything risky. The only un like slightly unsafe thing I do is I cancel into this because I figured. I think my strategy on the in the matchup and against the player was good, so that's what I did. Okay, next matchup. Now this is winners finals. I was not confident in my game plan in this matchup in the sense that my game plan was very level one. I haven't fought a lot of Axel players that like know how to deal with soul really well so my strategy is like very level one in this matchup it's very like i'm gonna just fight against right, axel let's... like it's somebody i met in the tower but let's... as i was playing i was remembering so many things that i was like oh yeah i should do that right I was like oh yeah i should do that that makes a lot of sense so i think the first set i played okay the second set i think i played much better and i remembered some stuff so there's a few things in this where, like, as it's going, I'm like, oh, it's all coming back to me. And the other thing is, Ryan's defense in this matchup is good, and it's very different. Like, if you notice how I defended against Soul, it's nothing like how Ryan defends against Soul. He defends in a very weird way. 
So I talked about this when I played KV, but playing someone who IBs a lot, you have to change up your offense in like a weird way, right? So playing someone who does fuzzy jump or like delayed jump a lot, you have to change your offense up also in a very weird way. And not a lot of people defend like this. This is a very like archaic way of defending. This is a very like, I used to play Guilty Gear. So this is how you defend in Guilty Gear way to defend, which there's nothing wrong with it. It's like a very effective strategy. It's just not a lot of people do it. Uh, and I don't know why, to be honest, because it's, it's what I also do a lot of the times too. It's a very unusual style to defend against, probably because you have to practice fuzzy jumping. You can't just like do it. You need to like kind of practice some of the timing on some things. Let's get into it. I'm right. I wait at round star. Axel far slash beat soul far slash round star and his 5k and his 2d are also very good. So I don't really want to challenge right away. I walk back and then I hit success when I saw movement. That's something that's very important in this matchup. I tend not to do Gunflame after block strings against Axel very much because of jump ass. I usually don't do it, and then I do it later on. You know what I mean? Because if you do it all the time, Axel players will just always hold up back against you. And then once they start doing that, you, uh, you can do Revolver, which will hit them in the air. And then, like, you know, they'll air block it, and it makes you really plus, right? So that's the strategy. So running on this, I was a little early on my run. Take 30%. Ouch. I meant to dash forward there, but I was blocking, so I got back dash. I FD this to make myself less negative, and I try to challenge. I, I sh probably should have DP'd, to be honest with you. I try to air FD it and make myself less negative on the hook in. But yeah, that was a great air throw. Not something that most people do. That's plus, so I try to dash block. I didn't get dash block. I'm out of there. The run up throw to take space. Yeah, Very good when you're a zoner. Uh, well played right. first round. The most, uh, his 2K goes under a lot of things Soul does. Yeah, his 2K, I mean, very traditionally, his 2K goes under a bunch of stuff, including his 5K. And in this matchup, his far slash, actually, which is pretty important. And his 5H. So first round, I just didn't get in. This is why I challenged with this on the second round. You love to see it. You miss the vortex combo and they burst anyway. Best feeling on the planet. Uh, I try to dash block again right there. I should dash uh, one thing about Renson that I forgot is challenging with six H or using vortex after you block the first bit or dash blocking or jumping or like, there's like so many things I forgot. Like, Oh yeah. When I block Renson and he hasn't popped yet, I need to just do an action. That's particularly mid screen. I, I forgot that that was something you're supposed to do in the matchup. To be quite honest, I totally forgot. It's a thing. I like, didn't think about it. I did that expecting a jump back, but he didn't do it. That was a vortex that I missed. Again, another thing in this matchup that is like, it's hard because I always forget this because, you know, you don't fight that many characters like this. You can't really use 5k anti-air very well against Axel. You have to 6p. I constantly forget that you're supposed to 6p against this character, against his jump H or his jump S or whatever. I always am doing 5k instead because it's just a habit, which is like, oh, duh. I need to not do that. Again, do you see the defense? The defense was so good. And nobody defends against this. So it's like really hard to practice against this. But uh, I, I realized later on what I should have done. I was a Ms. Vortex punish. So I go for walk back, far slash. He does fuzzy jump out. And then I try to anti-air his jump back and he IDs. You see that? He waits for a second and then he does jump. So the input that you do for this is you do up back plus FD and then down back really quickly. You do up back, down back. So if you're in block stun, you will just get down back, right? So if I was slightly earlier, he would have just down back and been fine. If he is right and he gets his timing right, he up backs and then he gets FD. So if he blocks something, he'll drag himself back down quicker or whatever. And then he's out, he's gone. And this, I should air throw this. I should not hit 5k. And I should hit 6P if I want to anti-air anyway. Again, not a lot of people defend like that. So it's like I have to remember like, oh, yeah, he likes doing that. So I can do things to fix that. I can I can do things to make that not work. I wanted gold burst there, but, you know, unfortunate. I got IFD there, which, you know, you don't really want to IFD that. But uh, sometimes you get IFD. So game one, you know. I was remembering. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I think I'm starting to remember what I'm supposed to do in this matchup. It's all coming back to me, right? I can't believe that I hit my button. That was, like, so late. 
Again, right there, that should have been 6P. That was a mistake from me. I got lucky right there. My IFDs are just too good. This is something that, you know, in retrospect, I'm really mad I didn't do more. In mid-range against Axel, I was thinking about this. I was like, dude, I need to do way more 6P and Fafner. I, like, I completely forgot to use Fafner in this matchup after, like, some point. There was, like, a moment I did it. I think this might have been it. And then I just, like, forgot to use it more. It's so good in this matchup, I think, mixed in with run, 6P, and other things. And I just completely forgot about it, honestly. The worst thing that happens is like an IED jump back ass hits me instead of it being blocked. I still advance, so, you know, it's not the end of the world. I totally forgot to use this, and I was like, oh yeah, and I didn't do the right combo because I wasn't ready for it to hit. Good challenge. That is something I needed to do more, by the way. Run forward on that. Take the corner back. I didn't get the clean hit DP, so it didn't kill, but still not the end of the world. Pretty good round so far. Yeah. Pretty good round so far. I feel pretty good about that. I constantly forget things like that. And, it, you know, if you don't fight a character a lot, it's very common. I did this round star, and when he didn't punish, I felt great. I was like, hell yeah, no punish on my 6H? You love to see it. That's great. I also hit 5k NT there. It didn't work. I should have 6P'd. I keep forgetting that. I should also advance in positions like that after Rensen. I just always block because I haven't fought Axel enough to remember. I like, you know, I'm like, yeah, I should probably do that. You see those delayed FDs looking for the fuzzy jumps? Again, I can just delay. I should change my pressure to deal with that, but I'm just not because I was a little late on this. This is a reversal punish on Snail, but I didn't time it right. I, I expected something there from him. I don't remember what it was. I think it was YRC is what I was trying to bait. Yeah, challenge that. How's Vortex again? That that right there is like round losing. Missing the Vortex punish on Snail. Because when you block Snail, it's like minus 24. And you can just Vortex, which is what I tried to do. And I got far slash. And he's like maybe dead if I build the meter. You got to be really snappy to get this punish, right? You got to be super ready to do this. And it's the same reason why when I block Rensen 2, I don't do 6H or 6S early or jump. Because you kind of have to be like super prepared to do it. And I, at this point, it was too late for me to try that. So my strategy was to do the simplest thing, which is block it in far slash. Because, yeah, it's a really good answer. It's like minus five or something. Minus, what is it? Minus five, minus seven or something on blog. You can just far slash after. This. So this right here, this is my strat against uh, Rensen 2. I labbed it like maybe right before the last version. And instead of trying to do like 6H or 6S to interrupt it or like jump, which is like a universal one or bandit bringer, my strat was just block it and hit far slash because, you know, this is a nice little challenge, right? I'm just, he pulls me in, I challenge him, I feel good about it. However, my far slash just didn't reach and I was like, oh shit, well that sucks. Or I was like too, too late or something, I don't know what it was. You know, sometimes you lose the round because of it. That was like the thing I labbed against it was hitting far slash like was the easy safe thing to do. Instead of trying to do 6H or 6S. And I was like, well, that sucks. You love to see it. I take the easy combo. Instead of doing jump dust, jump dust. I baited. I tried to backdash to bait it. Uh. How many times do I get hit by that in this match? These, these gold bursts by like a pixel. I can't believe that hit me. Can you believe that hit me, chat? That was... I was so high in the air. I was like double jump early height and the... Rents and eight hit me. You hate to see it. I don't RC here because I want to do wild throw or regular throw and keep it safe. This is a mistake from him, Fafner. Yeah, he. That's like the only time he backdashes when I have meter. I think almost every other time he jumps. But that was a that was an okay game. I made a lot of mistakes in my strategy in general. I think in this matchup. Again. I like that round start option. Good walk under two. I need to run. I need to do way more Fafner and I need to do way more 6P in this matchup. And right there, I should have empty jumped into far slash. Another thing that I didn't realize until after the set was over. I was like, oh yeah. I need to do empty jump into far slash more. That should have been a 6P instead of a 5K. But these are things you don't remember like when you are fighting the character and you know, you're like, oh yeah, I need to advance I, exactly what I was 
just gonna th say I should do that more. I need to advance with something. I waited for the or I waited for the burst, which I was okay doing because I already had the corner. You know what I'm saying? And not dead. Oh, air blocks on plus. Yeah, it might have been super or something there that he tried. Feel pretty good about that. That went pretty good. I'll take it. I shouldn't have delayed my whatever it's called there because um I could have gotten a better combo than the one I got. But I didn't I didn't know the height, so I did the safe combo. That is what something I need to do way more in this set, and I didn't realize it until much later. I thought that also punished. Maybe that doesn't punish air snail actually. Maybe I should have just done six H. Six H is probably so much safer. In general, I should have probably just done 6H there, but I, th I thought that was also a punish on Air Snail. Yeah, I need to do way more Fafner in this matchup. Though, at watching it back, way more Fafner, and I need to do 6P and Empty Jump more. All those things are so obvious in, in hindsight. Oh, I didn't mean to burst. Whoops. Yeah, that was an accident. I think what was happening is I was drumming my buttons, and then... I didn't have burst, so I was, like, chilling, and then, like, after the slowdown, my burst came out, and I was just like, what? Yeah, a little late. I'm, I'm supposed to just hit 6H there or 6S. I labbed that a long time ago. I can look at it again. I'm pretty sure I can just hit 6H or 6S. But in my head, like, I was trying to do the tournament answer, which the tournament answer was like, wait, just block it and then hit far slash. Like, it's the easiest thing to do. Because if you're late, you know, you get hit by it and it sucks. And then it didn't work. I was pretty sure that was what I was supposed to do. I just block it and hit far slash. Ah, that sucks. With the 2K beating it, that probably wouldn't have happened last version, which is pretty funny. I, I have deed myself into the into the um, bomber or uh, whatever it's called. I'm pretty sure that was a DP at them. Again, right there. I, I was plus, but my 5K is not going to be 2K there, unfortunately. Uh, I already burst. Nice. Damn, that accidental burst caught me. Yeah, that accidental burst in the other round was so brutal. I didn't, I did not mean to do it. I was just like drumming my buttons, and then I burst, and I was like, "What?" I had like a pixel of life. I was like, "No." Totally missed my meaty. That's so bad too. When I get hit by that, I'm like, "Oh no." I was, I was trying to walk back there and respect, uh, respect two K, and it just hit me anyway. So I was like, "Well." That was unfortunate. I should have done the 2k route, probably. I need to do way, way, way more empty jump here. It's very obvious. I, I did it a lot more in the second set. I think that was a DP attempt. Oh. I didn't believe. I should have just done run 6h. I, I forgot I that that was the, the easy answer run. to snail. Honestly, it's been a long time. I, I did not have a good strat. That's something I labbed against Axel. That is uh, a good one. The round start walk back. I was jumped us. I missed it on accident. It's very easy to make mistakes in tournament. I, I need to be six ping there instead of what I'm doing. He missed it. I feel really good about that. I didn't see it. It was completely off screen. I wish he got what he tried to do. I would have been in a better spot. Yeah. If he got the one vision activation earlier, I would have been way happier than the one that he, he... Like, that one could have been way worse for me. Like, the one earlier, I would have been way happier if he didn't miss it and just, like, carry me to the other corner. Like, whatever, right? It's fine. Life goes on. This one, like, I was way more scared I was going to die. I was like, oh, no. I was like, this could be really bad. I was like, oh, no, I don't want this at all. That other one vision, I was like, hell yeah, all right. And then this one was like really bad. I was like, uh oh. Regular throw? Of course. I need to dash right there earlier. I, I, the, the explosion's not going to hit me, but I'm not really used to that. Like, I don't really know. Finally, I 6P. Yeah, that was my timing being bad there. I'm not really used to that matchup, so I need to dash there. I, I don't recognize that when I'm playing here. But in hindsight, it's something that I need to do. It's like very obvious. That sucks. I should have done close slash there. 
Yeah, but it would have broken the wall, which is like the thing I didn't want. I didn't want you to break the wall into the corner and then me just die. Like, be, be reset mid screen with you building meter. I think I respected. Oh, I did not get success there. I think I respected wake up super there. DP at them. Oh, my deep. Oh, my I tried it twice. twice. I know the, se there's, the second one was a safe jump, but I just didn't get it. 6 H OTG on the Vortex trade. I could have done it. I don't know if it would have killed. Would it have killed? Yeah, it might have, but I just wanted to take the Oki anyway because I was like, I have meter here. I can wait for the super, and I did delayed 5k in case of super. I just didn't get a success here. I don't know why. Maybe I did it too late. And then right here, this is a DP attempt. Every time he did run up throw here, I DP'd, and it worked because, you know, he, he's got to run kind of far. And then just this time, I didn't get my DP. It happened. I was learning a lot of the things to do in the matchup as I was playing. Like, I haven't played a lot of Axel players who have a, a challenging neutral game to deal with. Most of them, and also challenging defense, it's usually one or the other. Usually their defense is quite good, or their, their neutral is, like, pretty good. But not both. So I was like, oh, okay, there's a lot of things that I can do better. Which is a good first sign. And then I played Losers Finals. So Losers Finals, I played the winner of Ebonic and Klage, which... I think I was pretty happy to play either, to be honest. I have a lot of new ideas to try against Axel. I don't know if any of them are right or not, but I have a lot of ideas. My game, I talked about it earlier. My game plan against Anji is basically the same. Let me tell you what happens in this first game here. I'm going to give you an, a breakdown. So those of you guys who've never played in tournament, I'm going to tell you what happens. Game one happens. We start gaming. I see those roll. Do you see that? You see the start of the round? Hold on, let's watch this. I swing at the start of the round. We get, we get a, ch a chunky rollback. It's jumping from two frames to one frame. I'm like, okay. The game feels like molasses. The game feels so fucking bad. Like, I, it's like in, you saw it right there where it chunked. The game feels like it's in slow motion. Like, it feels horrible. This is like one of the most laggy feeling games I've played in some time. The game feels horrendous. You know, it's like, I, I cannot, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I, I, yeah, everything feels feels bad. Nothing about this connection oh, feels good. Feels really, really, really bad. Okay. But this shit's tournament. It doesn't matter it's how it working. feels. I got to play this match. So, like, that hits and, like, yeah, the game is just, it's not having it. It's not buying it. The game's like, nope, feels bad. So I'm playing this connection, right? And I'm just like, dude, what am I going to do? So as I'm playing this connection, I still win the first round and I'm still pissed. I'm like, dude, this nice. connection feels like dog shit. So instead of doing what I'm supposed to do in the matchup, I just like start getting hit by random shit and running at Anji. Why? Is that my strategy in the matchup? No, not at all. I played I played earlier and you watched my strategy in the matchup. I was just like, dude, what the fuck? This connection sucks. So instead of just like playing well, I was pissed and I just exploded. That's what happened. I just got pissed and I was like, dude, this connection fucking sucks. So I just sent it and I didn't care what happened. And I'll look at it. Oh, it's so nasty. No anti air. I'm just, I just, I'm getting hit by everything. I don't do uh, uh, my button fast enough there to hit him. I get hit there trying probably IB or something. I'm just like challenging. I'm like. Yeah, I could have done close slash there, I think, too, as a punish. I No punish on the spin, no cancel on the fight. I'm just like, I'm I'm mentally guard broken. I'm actually just so tilted. I'm like mentally guard broken. I'm so mad. And, but it's tournament. Like, what are you going to do, right? It's like, you know, the game's lagging in tournament. If I lose and I say the game was laggy, they're going to be like, yeah, uh-huh. You got to just get it together. This is what tournaments are like. You miss your punish or the game lag or the sun's in your eyes. You got to just keep it together. That's the point. So after this match, I say like, all right, all right, all right, all right. The game exploded. But if I just play my normal game plan, I'll be fine. This is fine. This is what I say after this. The game is mad chunky, but I think if I just slow down and play it a little tighter, it shouldn't matter. So, okay. Game one, you know, last round, close. I die, right? What happens in the next three games straight, chat room? Well, that's a good start, isn't it? Fate the burst. Everybody loves bursting there. We'll be seeing Ryan Hunter very soon. Go for the regular throw. I got lots of meter. 
I keep it safe. I wait for the spin. I don't challenge anything risky. Punish. Okay. Great round. Did everything you're supposed to do against Anji. I waited. I didn't get too impatient. I played solid. I, I beat the startup of spin there, it looked like. I back up a little bit just in case. I want to see what he's going to do. I, ho I wait back. Punish when I see the whiff throw. Much cleaner. I'm playing so much more aware. So much better. I missed the combo, but it's okay. I still got Oki. Read the back dash. Damn, he's good. Do dust because the connection's laggy. Hell yeah. Great, great two rounds. Next game. Go next. I'm waiting. I'm trying to bait spin. When I do that, when I'm just doing a lot of success like that, I want him to spin. Yeah, he, he did a spin at a great time there. I want him to spin and so that I can whip punish it. That's the idea. I would love it for... See? That's what I want. I'm I'm waiting. I use success as like a bait, right? I'm like, hey, this is juicy. Can you please just spin at me? And then he does it. I'm like, sick. Cool. I'll just take the spin for a free punish. That's just a whiff, a whiff punish. Feels good. I just I want him to spin so I can punish it. I mean, to be honest with you, I think Anji's grounded buttons are he has really good grounded buttons. Like his far slash, his six H is so good. His six H is mad good. He's got a solid little two S, he's got five K, his two D is good. He has really good grounded buttons. You know, just standing there hitting grounded buttons is not everybody's play style. It's not everybody's favorite thing to do. Wait again. That's the jump. He did throw last time, so I backdash. The adjustment. I'm sending it with a wild throw 100% because I don't want to get counter supered. 6H is so good. Six, dude, Anji 6H is so good. Yeah, huh? It's a check. Does he know how to deal with it? Nope. Just keep doing it. Run under, bait the burst, because why not? Worst thing that happens is I do jump close slash. I do close slash jump block, and I just get Oki. I'm like, cool. That's four straight rounds. All right, let's see what the next the next two rounds are like. You know, the first game, the connection's exploding. I'm just like, dude, this sucks. Then I'm just like, okay, let's keep it together. Play bait the burst. Everybody loves. They see counter, and they're like, help. Get me out. Sending it. He just gets counter hit there. I'll take it. Bing, bang. Easy peasy. So five straight rounds. Tried to do... I could have got a, a bombo there, but it's tournament, so I kept it safe. I couldn't believe he challenged. I was like, dude, didn't I not just counter hit... Like, this is one of those things where it's very easy to tilt off the face of the planet. Because you just like... Counter hit someone twice in a row for trying to swing after close slash or, or far slash, and then they just do it again. It's like very easy to get grumpy about it. So that's why I was like, dude, you, I, j did you watch the last round? Like when I just do this and I see that I'm like, oh, you yearn for death. I expected a change in the game plan, but sometimes his little tube socks come out and kick you in the leg and you're like, word, okay. I like couldn't believe it. I was like shocked. I was like, you're just gonna send it? I was a little early, but yeah, I just baited it anyway. This is supposed to be jumped us and I missed it. I just keep it tight. I'm like, okay. That was an air throw. Again, missed. Hi B, I'm just chilling. I'm not gonna try to interrupt it. Yeah. The reason I'm not gonna try to interrupt it is like I'm okay if he cranks my Yeah, that's I was chilling. I'm okay with the, him cranking my risk for a little bit because I was like sitting on meter like almost and like I'm just chilling here. And if I'm like really in trouble, I can start FDing him away. Like if I'm that scared, you know. So I, w I didn't feel that much in danger. I was just chilling. Like if he does Nagiha or overhead, I'm fine. If he does the P follow up, sure. If he does the hop, I was going to hit 5k. I, I didn't really feel that threatened by him doing the P follow up over and over because if he did it another time, I probably would have just started at being. Yeah, him sending it with the overhead is like way better for me than if he just kept doing the P follow up. I would have just been forced to spend burn bar to FD him away or whatever. But he just, you know, he just sent it. So I was like, oh, okay. Bro. Nothing wakes me up fast. So yeah, the connection actually tilted me so much that after that, I was like, okay, let's just slow down and play our normal game plan. And then it, it went like that. So, you know. Thank God the connection was so bad the first game. It woke me up. Tilted me 360 degrees back to the plan. I was like, bro. I was like, you live like this? I can't do it. The connection felt so bad. I was like, dude, this is so... He did Fujin and the frame rate went to 10. I was like, ah. 
<laughs> Hell. Okay. Again, say I, I don't really have a better plan in the Axel matchup because I haven't really had time to digest yet, but I do want to do more empty jumps in this set, and I'm sure you've already noticed that that's a plan that I'm, I'm sticking to. Doing a little bit more empty jump, doing a little bit more, uh, what's it called? I don't do more Fafner in this set, which is a mistake. I need to do more Fafner. I couldn't believe he did a uh, nice bomber. Oh, and that's a punish? I didn't know that. Okay, I gotta keep that in mind. That's an unfortunate. I think if I got close slash, I might have been able to block. I need. I, I'm really bad at. Um, I let go of FD slightly early. I'm really bad at empty jumping at against Axel and then, and then uh, challenging. You're oh the counter hit got you Ryan. Word that sucks. The counter hit timing for bomber is different. That was a good reaction by me. I hit 5k really early. That's what I got to do, by the way. That was a much, much better offensive sequence than everything else I've done so far against Ryan. That was so much better. The problem is you have to be super sharp to do that. Like, did you, you have to see how early I reacted, right? You have to be, like, immediate. And if you're slightly late, you, you know, you die there. I think, like, when you're really sharp, that's something that you can do. But, like, when, when, it's, when you're not really sharp, it's kind of bad, right? What's over the guy? What up? I needed to run forward earlier there. I needed to run forward there again. I'm doing a not enough in neutral. I think I'm playing it a little too slow. Oh, nice. I can't believe that hit me. That was supposed to be a bandit bringer also, which is funny because it would have still lost, but I also need to OS the back dash there. I'm doing not enough here on the ground. I need to I need to run a little bit more. That's too far. Yeah. I did the wrong combo there, but I, I knew he was... See, again... In this, if I was a little faster, if I air to air him or I air through him or something, I would have been fine. But I'm just a little too slow. Yeah, again, I should. My timing was wrong there. That was the right timing to frame trap him. Dead. I'm just a little too slow. If I was a little bit snappier, I think my pressure would have been great. I think like doing a lot more 6P and like not trying to hold the corner as hard with like fast 5K or air throw or whatever, like. Just staying on the ground and like waiting is like a little bit of it's like a better option if you're a sleepier, which I was, but I wasn't going to do it. I was like, no, I'm going to just I'm going to just try to do this because that's my normal play style is, little, is snappier, you know, so I was like, nope, I'm not doing it. That's one of the first gun flames I've done in a while there. I don't think he can bait the burst actually if 2D counter hits. I think he's kind of stuck. Oh, I didn't I, I thought he because he FD'd here by the way that I would be too far for him to get the punish, but he didn't FD me enough for that to be the case. Generally, like if somebody's just holding FD on you, doing banner revolver is really good because it makes the banner revolver pretty hard to punish. You know, it makes it safer, which is important, but even more important than it just being safer is what a block here, by the way. Uh it, it spaces you out, right? So it pushes you further away and it makes it safer on block. Dude, I don't play fighting games this late ever. I was I was getting I was too tired. Right there, that's what I needed to do. Yeah, again, I thought I thought the banner revolver was gonna be far enough that it wouldn't matter. See, I gotta do that way more. I just keep forgetting to do it. Again, too late on my 5k there. I gotta be a little earlier. I don't I don't game at in the evenings, you know. I, I game one o'clock to like four. You know, so I was fading. That's, that's how tournaments are. I again, I baited that shit too. I walked back and waited. I was like, here it comes, and then I got hit by it like an idiot. Ah, uh, that's what I was looking for. Like an idiot. Uh huh. He's dead. I'm gonna get robbed again. I couldn't believe that gold burst hit me. I was so sad. The jump age beating the DP there confused the shit out of me. That's robbed. that's actually a pretty common thing. The jump age beating DP for soul. Like, you know, if you jump back in the corner and do jump age, a lot of times your DP, soul's DP will lose. I usually don't play this late, right? It's not about being old. It's just when you play. Like, you know, some people are like night owls and they just play all night and stuff. That's not really how I am. Does that make sense? That's just not me. That was so funny, by the way. I, I <laughs> He tried to do the bomber there like so high and then it just didn't work yeah that was a nerf by the way this is this is souls far slash nerf 
This right here, this counter hit into this counter hit into this H whiffing, this is the nerf to his far slash, making this not happen. But then it baits the burst, and then I try to whip punish the burst, and you know. Yeah, I should have done 6S, but honestly, I wasn't really ready. That was, I think, a bandit revolver, and I got 5k instead. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I'm pretty sure I did 6S bandit revolver late, and I just, like, missed the cancel window, you know? And I just got 5k, because I tried to delay it. You have to delay it to make a combo there. That was a sick jump P, by the way. I finally got an IB that I've been trying the whole time. You love to see it. Love to see that, too. I blocked it nice and close. I was one hit early there, challenging. I should just 6H it, or I should just 6S it, or I should just jump, but like, I'm not really doing it because I was just, in my head, the answer was to do far slash after blocking it, which is honestly probably a really bad answer in this patch. With the change to far slash pushback, it's probably a pretty not great option. I should actually try to interrupt it now instead of blocking it and then doing far slash. Like, it's probably much worse to block now than it was before. You know, it's my bad. Uh, it's two on me. This game, it's like something tragic happens this game, I'm pretty sure. If I remember right, something Omega tragic happens. I think I tried DP there. I should just challenge again there. Again, I should run. Yeah, that was good. I'm glad I did that. I should have 6 H though instead, I think. That's a punish, yeah. I can't believe that. Again, that should be 6P. I can't believe that beat my option there or whatever I hit. Love that empty jump. I need to do that way more. Ah, this is something I forgot. You know how people always talk about throw PRC being like incredibly... Like, you, there's no counterplay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. One thing I always forget about throw PRC is, like, you need a super jump here. A lot of people who are good, they just double jump. And if you super jump, it makes that harder to happen. But it also means that they can hit a button on the way up or when you're on the way up or whatever. It's very good against backdash. But it's very weak to jump back if your opponent double jumps or hits something to stop you from being able to do it. Some characters don't have double jumps. There's a couple. But double jumping is, like, really good because my... Move just whiffs here, or my air throw just whiffs here because of the double jump. I don't know. Yeah, people act like throw PRC is like unstoppable. Like it's obviously it's incredibly good, but I go for it. He jumps. I go to air throw. He just double jumps and then hits jump H, right? Also, alternatively, you can jump forward again, right? And then you just wait. So like it's very strong for every character. However, the important thing about it is if you just use your movement options in the air, you can force the 50-50 to be unfavorable for the character that does it. It's still RPS that you have to guess on offense and you spend 50 meter for. I think about it like it's an air interaction that is probably better for you than like me spending meter on the ground to do revolver R. Like revolver RC on block is way better for soul than throw PRC when you're in the air. The RPS there is much better for me on the ground when I get a, a real 50-50 that you're stuck in than versus the air where you could double jump forward or up or hit a button or Axel can bomber RC, quick RC out or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's a much better interact. I don't know. Like, I think it's much better in the corner there. That was a great defense. I forgot that you're supposed to super jump there. I, I didn't do it because most people are bad at defending against it. Yeah, they could BRC, they could do something. I'm happy I hit 2k there and I didn't get baited by the rainwater. And I'm happy I challenged that right there. Those are both good things for me. Even though I'm going to lose this game, I think my defense right there was pretty good. That was a miss. Oh, I tried to delay a missed uh, confirm. I meant to dash and I didn't. I got double jump instead. This, this round is pretty, yeah, pretty hopeless. You know, pretty, pretty rough spot. I have no bar, no health. I should have just far slashed. I made a mistake. I I did think he was going to backdash there, so I tried to... I'm explaining it now. I tried to run up and delay the delay the throw and then throw him back into the corner because I thought he was going to backdash, but, like, I should have just run up and hit far slash to catch the backdash. Like, I wanted the corner back, but I shouldn't have done that. I should have just fucking ran at him and punched him. I, like, overthought it. I was like, this will be fine. I need to do jump S, jump H there, and I forgot about it. This is this pressure is much better than what I've been doing before that. Also, I need to do that more. That should have been a 6P. No RC there? Damn, I probably should have.
That was better. I'm happy that I didn't just super jump up at him right there because of the angle, but I also did that wrong. Yeah, I should have DP'd. I should have also 6 speed. Those are all mistakes. Those are all just things I'm not used to against Axel. Yeah, that's not at all what I should have done. I could have won the round there. Super jump. Uh, oh, I like that idea. Never mind. My idea was pretty good. I tried to catch him with 2H on the way down. That was a pretty good idea. I should have done Gunflame, though, instead of what I did. Or, or uh, Revolver. Both of those were better than what I tried. 6P. Run and Fafner. Yeah. I, I got... I, I should... There's a lot of things I should be doing differently here, for sure. Um, my bad. Yeah. Nice. I shouldn't have FD'd all the way down. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Looking back at this, there's, like, so many clear instances of things that make... I'm like, yeah, this... I should try all this against Axel. It's so funny because I didn't have a good plan while playing, but while watching back... My plan, I'm like, oh, I, this makes way more sense about what I should do. There's so much more space that I should contest with 6P and Fafner and run and 2S. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. Now that I think about it, that all makes sense. But my strategy in this matchup is incredibly underdeveloped. You know when I mentioned that matchups are not just like, oh, you know, when Axel does Rensen, just jump forehead. Like, matchups are like a very convoluted. There's a lot of things to learn in every situation and instance. This is a great example of like a matchup where my general strategy was okay. It was like very level one, but my strategy beyond that was like very lacking. I didn't have a lot of good ideas. Now I have so many new ideas to try. That's a lot of matchups. Until you fight someone who is truly super, super good with the character normally, like best in class, you normally don't have a real idea about what to do. They need to understand your character. And they need to understand your options like really good, really well. It turns out a lot of the people who I play in my stream are very good. And they're the reason I have good matchup knowledge against other characters. It's just Axel is not a very common character and he's hard to play. I, there's just not that many Axel players in my stream. There's only a few. Like the best one is on console. And I only play console one a week probably, right? And Doof's internet's been messed up. Doof's like the Axel I normally play. He's been busy. But that's a great example of like when people... You know, people will post matchup charts, right, chat? And they're like, here's my thoughts on all these matchups. I feel like none of those people really truly understand the matchups in the way that they probably should to post a matchup chart. My button's three frame, their button four frame, me win. Facts, you're spitting. Stop playing chat shitters like Hotashi. Oh, Ryan, you're, you're right. You know, the day before Commentator Cup, I played Hotashi and it was three to me. I feel like my strategy against Nagori Yuki really good then the next day i got exploded to ryan's axel does that mean axel beats soul and like nago doesn't because i beat hotashi and then lost to ryan like no what it means is my matchup strategy against nago is better more importantly it means that the commentator cup was more stacked than evo because i beat the evo champion and then lost the commentator cup 